almost the last day of June, June 29th, rushed me to Mountain View Hospital um, in Las Vegas. And sure enough, uh, met with the lead GI. He said, I'm sorry, you have full-blown cirrhosis. Your liver is 100% failing. Um, and then I didn't understand what a MELD score was at that point. He said it was a 27, and he explained that a 35 is the critical point where I would be number one on a donor list. Now, unfortunately, in Las Vegas, we don't have any liver um, places that can take care of us. And at this point, I was told that I am such prone to bleeding that if they poke me wrong, I'll bleed to death. I can't get a clot because if it clots, I'll just die off of that. And then I can't get an infection either because if I get that, I'll just get sick and then I'll die. So uh, as fast as they could, and they did a really great job over there, uh, Matt Kovac and the entire team of doctors, they did an amazing job at Mountain View. Um, they just kept me alive pretty much um, until uh, Riverside was ready to take me. These are the type of miracles that um, both Riverside Community Hospital and Mountain View uh, really does for patients, you know? And by the grace of it all, somehow Matt Kovac got a hold of CEO Jackie over here at Riverside Hospital and she said, open up that bed, open it up. You know, let's make it happen. So uh, I get in uh, right off the bat, man. Uh, and it's really neat to have seen it, this whole process because the very nurses who started with me, the caretakers, are the same ones who's now seeing me go from pre to post to recovery to discharge. Dr. Boland, it's the first one I see, uh, 1 p.m. that day on the 9th. Uh, he says to me, look, I've never even seen this before, but I did your MELD score and it's a 37. And you already know we're past 35, so I didn't even think I'd be talking to you. I've never seen this. Um, we need to get you on the list right now. So Dr. Rosaro, who is the, our liver specialist here at uh, Riverside Community Hospital, um, he was on vacation in Italy. Next thing I know, I'm on a phone FaceTiming Dr. Rosaro, and during his vacation, he's sitting there going, you don't worry about a thing, Mr. Reyes. We're gonna take care of you. And I'm like, I'm so sorry I'm interrupting your, your vacation, doc. And he's like, no, no, no. We need to make sure you're gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. um, so then the team just starts working. By that 10th, I had Dr. Anomaly and Dr. Taylor like on it. And Dr. Anomaly is like, I need to get you on the top three right now. And this whole team, I felt like the whole hospital in a way stopped everything that they were doing just to save me. Now, I'm sure that's not what happened because they're saving everyone. I woke up. Apparently, everybody told me it only took six hours instead of the normal longer 12. I thought I was going to be in ICU like how me and my son were when he was an infant. And for me, I was like thinking, oh, I'll at least be here probably for like three weeks in ICU. In ICU. I was out in, I think it was five days. Dr. Fayak just walked in, did his little snip snip trick <laughs> uh, to put some drains on me and was like, you're good. We're sending you to med surge. So I'm back on the floor that I started in, but on the other side where all these successful transplants are. And um, again, this floor is amazing. As patients, we're just trying to focus on whether it's how do I get back to regular life to how do I get better today? I mean, there's so many how do I yep. that you need the we of an RCH to kind of fill in the gaps. They have been just angels, like angels. The fact that I got to meet you, David, and then uh, Miss Jackie, here she is. She's coming in and she's just saying hi to me. And I'm, it's just so overwhelming. Like, wow, the CEO saying hi to me? So that in itself was like, just a wow. That was a wow moment for me. And and that's what I mean is just my overall healing happened. Be, not because, like, it's easy to go, well, it's because of the medicine. 
But it isn't because of the medicine. Yeah. It's because every single hour I felt like there were people who were on a shift doing everything they can to kind of will me to like, you can do this. You can do this. I know it hurts, but you can do this. That's just pain, but you can do this. And, and it's true. When you start to have people encouraging you like that, you start to go, no, that is just pain. And it's not like I'm not going to be hurting for a bit. They are truly, truly the type of people that care. They're not clocking in. They're not going to work. There's not a feeling at all where you look at any nurse and you look them in the eyes, even housekeeping cares, you know? I mean, they'll look at you and they'll be like, oh, hey, what can I do to help you? And just to know that if your biggest goal is to live and you happen to be in a place that's blessed, like Riverside Community Hospital, um, to just, I want everybody to know, look, if we can copy what you guys are doing and all the other facilities, maybe we'll just have better everything. Because that's the truth. You know, the truth is um, your group has a system of truly understanding what it means to be a caretaker. It's, I mean, I see it and I see it with you guys and it's all walks of life. It's all caretakers with different religious backgrounds, different cultures. They came from different countries. Mm -hmm. um, and you guys are just picking the best. You really are. Um, so yeah, that's what I want everybody to know. You guys are the best at what you do, which is curing and healing people to the very best of your ability.